So section 18.1. The whole idea behind this topic is the following. Think about where potential energy comes from for gravitational potential energy. For example, if I were to drop this pen, you know this already because we've studied this, but it's going to fall down because it started with potential energy, and as it falls, it converts to kinetic energy, so it gains velocity. So the idea that if this pen is above ground, it has potential energy. When it's on the surface, if we call this ground level, right now there's no potential energy. Well, if it started falling, we can say this is a new height, now the ground is the surface. So it was always a relative idea, right? It was relative to the height. And the equation from that was mgy. Remember, potential energy equals mgy. Now, think about this one. Instead of the Earth giving off this gravitational field and pulling objects toward it, now you've got an electric source. And the electric source either does one of two things. If it's the same sign as the charged particle that's near it, it repels it. If it's the opposite sign of the charged particle nearby, it would attract it. But the idea is the same that it still exhibits some sort of energy. So the field created by the electrical source is like the Earth creating the gravitational field around the planet. So the field that we're creating around electrical source acts the same way, but except the fact that it pulls or pushes, whereas gravity only pulls. So we're going to take a look at electric potential energy, and it's going to look similar to the equation we've been using. It's going to look similar to the equation PE equals MGY. We're going to see a lot of common features to this section that we've seen already. All right, but the, it's, a, it's a bit of a confusing topic. That's why I'm trying to emphasize what's going on. So the Earth creates a gravitational field pulling you toward it because of, it has potential energy. Same thing with an electric source. So let's take a look at this next slide to explain a little bit more what it is. Uh, hey, can you just read for us the definition? Potential energy associated with an object due to its position relative to a source of electrical force. The general form of the equation that represents the electrical uh, potential energy is PE electric is equal to um, Q. It's a zero, meaning zero. the uh, test charge, Q, QED. Yeah. QED here. Now, for, for yeah, Ed, actually your name's in there, Ed. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this idea, again, is that you have a source, right? You have a source, and there's some other charge nearby. That source creates some sort of differential in that field, causing it to pull or push away from it. And we know that a force is what's pulling or pushing, but the object has the potential to do things, so it has potential energy relative to the source. Now, why do objects, besides gravity, what else do they need to have? Oh, let's see. An object has to have mass and have potential energy, right? We talked about this, mg, y. If there's no mass, it's not an object, because every object has a mass. That's kind of a stupid thing to say, but imagine an object with zero mass. Not possible, but it could. It would have no potential energy because mass is zero. Well, the same thing is here. If you have an electric field from a source here, and an object over here that is not charged at all, it's just a neutral object, it's not going to feel anything. So you have to have a charge, Q. Just like with potential energy, you have to have a mass, M. Right? So let's, let's jot this little piece down here. We'll write down a formula. We need M for potential energy we've seen. So Q is like M now, right? M was a, a property of the object, it's its mass. Q is a property of the object, it's its charge. The second part, capital E. What did capital E stand for in section 17.3? What was capital E? Uh, electric field. Electric field. Well, what's little g? Little g in our next part for this equation represents the gravitational field. And then finally, D usually stands for distance, and that's what it stands for here. Now, what's the last variable in the potential energy equation? Yeah, which is also a displacement or a distance from the relative ground level. So as a result, we can see the analogous nature. It's literally the property of the object, field, length. It's the same thing. All right? There's no difference here. But now we're looking at electric potential energy. So instead of mass, we use electric charge. Instead of gravity field, we use the electric field. And distance is still really distance. Now, this formula is very useful if we know the electric field we're in. And we know how far away the object is. And we also know the charge on the object. Now, 
if we don't know what the electric field is, but we know what the source is, what we can do and what we're going to see is more useful is to plug in for this capital E. And capital E was defined as KCQ over R squared. That was from section 17.3. So we take this expression here and plug it in for capital E. Giving us at the bottom here the following. Okay, literally I'm just plugging in the expression that represents the electric field in for the electric field. And now what we notice is we have the source is Q. Q0 is that uh, arbitrary object near the source. K is the constant. What did R stand for again? The distance between these two particles. Well, isn't that what D is also? So what could you do? Yeah, cancel one of the R's with the D that's there. So this R squared goes away, it cancels with the D that was there. And that's the equation that we end up with. This is the equation that's on your formula sheet. So if you want to figure out the amount of potential energy that a particle feels, or has rather, you know that it's the particle's charge, Q0, Coulomb constant, the source's charge, over the radius, or not the radius, geez, the distance from the source. Which, if you think about it, if it's orbiting, it's like the radius. On your formula sheet, I think I wrote it like this. I wrote it a little bit differently. I wrote it like this. Okay, in that generic form, it's the same thing. Take a look carefully and make sense of this. Ready? This is the arbitrary object in the field somewhere. Same thing as this. This is the source, Q, over here. Same thing as Q2 over here. All right, so you can think of this as the object, and this is the source. Oops. Okay, source. So on the form of the sheet, it looks like this, but that's what we're getting at. It's Q0 and Q, really. But that's the way you see it generically written. This looks similar to my force equation, except the force equation, F E, the electric force, had R squared in the bottom. So the three equations that we have, the electric force, the electric field, and the potential electric energy are all very similar equations. All right, they're all very similar equations. Let's take a look at an example of this. Force. Okay, determine the distance between these two. Now, we know the source, we know the charge, we know the actual amount of energy. Why is the energy listed as a negative here? Uh, maybe pulled, but what's the other? It's not repelling, actually, it's the other way around. It's attractive here. And remember that when we did, if you think back to the electric force, you look at the electric force, this was the equation for electric force, right? It's very similar to the equation that we're going to use in a moment, which is this, really. Look at the difference. One is just missing a square term, isn't it? Okay, when we did... So with this equation, when we got a negative force, we're just two particles, not with the three particles. When just two particles, a negative force meant it was an attractive force. The potential energy is the same thing, really. When you get a negative potential energy over an electric potential energy, it just means that it's an attractive, so it has the potential to move toward the source. If you have a positive potential energy, it's pushing it away from the source. Okay? Again, because what Paul was mentioning here, this is negative and positive. If you have a negative and positive, this has to become negative. So, in this problem, we're trying to figure out the distance between the two. How can I figure out the distance between the two? <coughs> Mike, help us out, Frank. How would I solve for the distance between the two? 
Well, what variable represents distance in this equation? There's only one of them that works for distance. Can you remember? Help me out, Victoria. Which one represents distance? R. R. So, Mike, how would you solve for R if you had to solve for it? Multiply. Yeah, multiply by R and how do you get rid of the PE? How do you get rid of potential energy? You're going to multiply by R and move it up, right? How do you get rid of this? Yeah, divide. So multiply by R and divide by PE, giving you the following. So literally, remember this flip-flop thing with the V equals X over T? We switch T and V, we could always flip-flop that. So given the following, we can go ahead and calculate. KC is given, always, on your formula sheet. Coulomb's constant. The charge on the particle is negative 5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Right, because it's micro coulombs. The charge on the source is 400 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs over the amount of potential energy. Okay, take a minute, calculate, try this please, don't just sit there, make sure you're practicing, take your calculator out. Anything that has scientific notation or looks a little different, you should always practice first. So, as Paul mentioned earlier, obviously, take a look. We have this idea of a negative and positive charge. It means that potential has to be negative. And take a look. It cancels, giving you a positive distance, which is what we're looking for here. We're not sure whether it's to the left, to the right, to the front, behind, above, below. We have no idea. But we do know how far it'll be, and that's what R comes out to be. What do we get for R? 0 0.3 meters, which is about 30 centimeters, okay, about 30 centimeters, 0 0.3 meters. This is exact or no? Okay, so it's exactly 30 centimeters. Let's see a quick application of this in the second problem, okay? So we had an idea of manipulating the mathematical part of this, we saw, <coughs> we've seen that now. Let's take a look at this next one where we can see an application. You had a charged particle okay, that you needed to somehow levitate. Remember the Vilkin oil drop experiment? I showed you that quick simulation or video of it. And the oil droplets kind of suspended in midair based on the charged base and the negative charge. They were repelling each other. So gravity was pulling down the oil drop, but the force of the electric, the electric force on the base plate was pushing up, so it found this little equilibrium. Think about it this way now. Imagine. I knew how much potential energy was in this pen. When I let it go, what happens to the amount of potential energy? It was? Yeah, because it converts to what kind of energy? Kinetic. So there's a conservation, right? Well, if I had, like, say, 20 joules of potential energy based on the height of this, and somehow I had a source on the ground that was a repulsive source that created 20 joules of potential energy in this, but it would be the other way because it's repulsive, it would sit there and levitate. So the idea here is to figure out what source you would need to levitate an object with the given information. So we want this charged particle to be floating above the source. We know that it's in an electric field. We want to figure out what is the specific charge of the source. We know the distance is about 85 centimeters, so a meter is about this tall, so about here off the ground, the source is on the ground. And we know that the object wants to float, right? because it's not really floating, it's just a balance of forces, what's happening there. And then its charge is 7 nanocoulombs, so a very small or a very low charge particle. Uh, the required energy is very little because it's got very little charge. So the question is to determine what should the source charge be. What should the source charge be? So let's go ahead and list what we know. Give me a piece of information. Jay, give me something. Um. What's a given we have? All right, good. You don't have to answer in the form of a question. It's not Jeopardy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what else? What else? Victoria. Oh, the radius is eighty-five Which is? Uh, 0.85 meters. Okay, the distance from the source is 0.85 meters. Good. What else? Marianne? Sure. 
10 to the negative. That's micro. This is nano now. Sorry. Nano, anybody remember nano? Negative 9. Okay, one of the ones you should know for this test coming up, you should know micro and nano for short. <laughs> micro is negative 6, nano is negative 9. So that's the information we know. We also know KC is I times N to the 9 and mu squared per coulomb squared. But we want to figure out what is the source? What is its charge? That's Q1, or just Q, or whatever you think of it as, right? It's the other Q that we're trying to figure out. So we've got our formula again. And our goal is to figure out Q1. Uh, Hannah, help me out. Solve for Q1. Step me through the process to solve for Q1 in that equation up over here. Okay, so you want to isolate the Q1. Good. So how do I get rid of that R first? Um, you can uh, multiply the R. Alright, that works. Now I want to get Q1 by itself. How do I get rid of the KC and the Q2? Good. Divide by the product of KCQ2. Cancel. Cancel. All right, so this is the expression for Q1. Go ahead and plug in. And what I want you to recognize, well, when you get the answer, we'll talk about the significance. Okay, we plug into this. You have all those four values. You have your potential. You have your distance. You have KC. KC is given, in case you've forgotten that. Say it one more time. It's not what I got. No. <laughs> I didn't get that. Did you put parentheses around your denominator when you divided? Because you have a product in your denominator, right? Check again. Check your numbers. Just go through them. See if you've got a negative sign in the exponent somewhere, or that's usually what it comes to be. Like PE should be negative 2, Q2 should be a negative 9. The answer should be 3.5 times 10 to the negative 4. And it's a charge, so it's Q, uh, so it's Coulombs. Now that may not seem like a large number, right? But look at its value relative to the other particle. The other particle was something times 10 to the negative 9. This is times 10 to the negative 4. So this is 10 or 100,000 times larger, at least. Right? On order of 5, 10 to the 5th is 100,000. This is at least 100,000 times stronger of an electric charge than the particle that's sitting above it. So although it seems like a little, it's all relative. How are we able to be pulled to the Earth? Why am I not pulled toward this calculated case? Because we both have gravity. We both exhibit gravitational fields. Why are we pulled together? Because what? Gravitation, you guys. Why am I not pulled towards something? Gravitation. Forget electric. For gravity. Like I'm pulled to the earth. I'm not pulled to this, although we both consider gravitational fields. Exactly. It has to do with the mass of the earth. It's overwhelming. It's the greatest mass in the area, so it exerts the greatest gravitational field overwhelming the others, so we feel earth's gravitational field. Because it's so much more massive than we or other objects around us are. So here, this source is so much more greater in charge than the original object or than the floating object with a of uh, 7 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. Okay, so it's able to hold it in place, levitating. So again, the idea is that you have potential energy because of a source generating a field, just like the Earth generating a gravitational field. Any questions on this? That's it for this topic. I want to go back to... 17.3 for a minute, but that's it for this. All right, so let's do that.